You ask me for sources, one country that has better net results for human freedom and human rights by restricting speech. What's your source? One. Time for the latest installment of Change My Mind, unedited conversations on controversial topics, providing an opportunity to rationalize one's own position. As always, uh, comment below with the topics you'd most like to see in the future. Today, we revisit a controversial topic in hate speech. So it was perfectly fitting that we revisited uh, our most controversial location. Texas Christian University. They get away with it on this motherfucking campus. Yeah. Really? Yes, they fucking do. If nobody invited him here, can we ask him to leave this campus? Is this being handled? Shut the fuck up. It may seem odd given the largely productive and, and mostly civil nature of the last installment of Change My Mind at TCU, that the school not only condemned our setup on public property, claiming it to have literally adversely affected the health of the student body, but the school even went as far as to offer counseling to students who might have been faced with the trauma of someone politely expressing a difference of opinion. So to prove that the students are more robust than the administrators and their tweeters give them credit for, we had to go back. Only this time we were asked to apply for a permit for the safety of the students, which never transpired. Then we were asked to change location. Then we were told that our table and chairs would now be considered a public obstruction. Keep in mind, this is the same school which a year ago approved a student permit before kicking us out anyway. So we decided that uh, we'd roll the dice. Hate speech isn't real, change my mind. Hi. Are you up having your mind changed? Uh, sure, yeah. Do you disagree with me? Go ahead. So I... Oh, on the outs, grab it, because we, we don't have a table or chair. It was taken away from us. Oh, uh, really? Well, yeah. So, could you, you mind scoot, scooching oh, yeah. in? Where's the best don't let me remind you? you about the scooch. Yeah, these are the cameras here. So, these cameras are on you and myself. All right, great. I'm not so, going to bite you. You can come on in. Don't worry. Um, so... No, I'm saying you don't worry. I, 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 we won't be able to see you. I'm, I'm a little nervous. All okay, right. that's fine. So, come, on, come in a couple steps here. Right, here we go. We'll meet in the middle. There we go. Is this good? Yeah, we're going to like hug it out. We will afterwards. Maybe. <laughs> All right. Depends. Uh, my name's Eric. Uh, okay. I'm from originally from Portland, Oregon. Oh, okay. Uh, so I'm experienced with a lot of like protests and things like that. People uh, being dragged out of cars and punched in the face. That kind something of like that. So <laughs> I was one time I was in. Did you hear about the May Day protests that happened about three years ago? Where no, well, some, first, I guess before we did, you said you are you interested in having your mind changed? I'm interested so in about, changing your yeah, mind. changing my mind on hate speech. Yes, sir. Okay. So let me kind of uh, establish the definition of hate speech, I okay. guess, so that we both kind of agree um, on terminologies here because word matter. Gotcha. Uh, what, I'm, what I'm talking about is not that people can't speak hatefully. People right. can, and I would discourage that. Yes, what sir. I'm talking about is any kind of speech that should be differentiated legally, as you see in the UK or in my uh, home country of Canada, okay. based on its level of offense or a quote-unquote level of oppression. Not gotcha. a real thing. Don't agree with it. If you disagree, you can change my mind. Okay, so I think that there should be... One problem I see in schools is the issue of having, like, racist thought and that that sort of thing isn't like I feel there should be limits on what should be say in campuses just as in the senses of like if there's someone saying like blatantly racist things I think it'd be better just for all involved so there isn't that sort of hateful attitude just because it could lead to conflict that isn't necessary so you're just talking about like on a private campus I'm talking in general like if someone let's say there's a member of the KKK that starts walking around campus and starts saying like this is not my personal belief, but it says like white people are the superior race. I don't think that person should be allowed to speak just simply because it would cause violence. And I think only on campus, I'd say on campuses, probably not. Obviously, there is I know there's a Supreme Court case that allows that speech to happen. They can are, regulate time and manner. Are you talking about in general, you're talking about the government shouldn't allow that person to speak that way. There should be legal consequences. Or are you just talking about a student on campus shouldn't be able to say I'm that? I'm talking on a student on campus because okay. I know there is a Supreme Court case that says government can regulate time and manner, I believe. But on a college campus, I just don't think it's necessary for this kind of speech to happen. Because again, there's not going to be a dialogue change if sure. someone's obviously saying white people are the superior race. I think there does need to be some kind of limit, but obviously people do need to have their voice heard. So what I disagree with you is... Are you, are you sure that minds won't be changed or dialogue might not be raised by a racist spewing racist speech? I just don't think there's any benefit to having someone say white people are the superior race. Okay. When there's obviously people, people of color that have gone through strifes. Obviously, I, I don't believe that I've been oppressed before, but I think that if someone's saying blatantly racist things, 
there should be limits, and I don't think there's any dialogue on, that on can campus. Be. Yes, sir. What about in the country at large? I don't want to sound like a racist if I say that, but I just don't think it's. I'm trying to formulate a good argument here. Sure. Do you mind stepping back a little bit? Yes, because we're, we're. Yeah, just gonna just come close to me here. Okay. If you don't mind, yeah, just because we. We're very limited in where we can be as far as not, you know, being obstructed to the sidewalk. Of course. I so, again, we've talked about on campus, uh, uh, on a public campus, you know, a publicly funded campus, you need to provide an equal platform to both political points of view. Right. But I asked you about the country at large. The country at large. So again, that's, that's what I'm talking about here, hate speech. We're talking about legislatively. Sounds to me like you think there should be limitations on speech. Not, obviously colleges are going to have their own rules. We've, co we've covered that. <laughs> For the country at large, I think that it should be more of a taboo. Obviously, if you're a group that has race, racism... It already is a taboo, though. So how are you changing my mind? It's already a taboo to say white people are better than black people. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's I think racist. everyone here agrees with Yeah. Okay. It's already a taboo. To... So what, what's, what, what would you change? What's the issue? That's just offensive speech. But it's protected under the First Amendment, right? That's true. Okay. Just, I'm, I'm just a little nervous. No, that's fine. That's fine. I'm trying I said to you think. said you already have your mind changed. So I'm wondering, I, I, I assume that meant that you disagreed with something that I'm, that I'm saying. So it just like, like you agree. Yeah, just to clarify, so like you agree that racism is bad and no one should say that. What's your thoughts on that? No, Do you think I agree people that should be allowed to be racist? Do I think people should be allowed to be racist? Sure. Why is two, that? Two, but do you see you just coupled two very different questions? That's. Can you review that? Sorry. Yeah. You said. Can you do we both agree racism is bad? Yes. yes, but then you in that same sentence asked me if I thought it was Oak should be allowed. Sorry for someone to be racist. Gotcha. Yes. Yes to both questions I think it's bad and I think someone should be allowed to be racist So do you think there should be any like what is the benefit to allowing people to be racist is like my thing Like why should the government protect that right is my question. What is the benefit to allowing you to say that it's bad to be racist? I guess my viewpoint wouldn't have, just to play devil's advocate, my viewpoint I don't think would cause harm. The problem I see with racism that it, it can cause harm to people, but when I'm saying I don't think you should be allowed to make bad comments on people's race, I feel like just from a utilitarian standpoint... But the point is right, the racist thinks that you're causing them harm. So my point is the benefit is allowing freedom of speech for all, even speech with which we disagree, otherwise it's not freedom of speech. Okay, I understand. Otherwise, how do you... How do you decide? Who decides what speech is permissible and what speech isn't? I suppose, well, I suppose there's two ways to do that. One, you have mob rule, which kind of just decides and it makes taboos, like you were saying. Or you could also have the government, but the problem with there is obviously, like, from your viewpoint, the government would therefore be the deciding platform Well, from everything. your viewpoint, is there a problem with that? It depends. Obviously, if there's obscene speech, if something's going to cause harm, like if you yell fire in a movie theater, you shouldn't be allowed to say that. Well, that's not free speech, though. That's that's a call to action. That's true. because that's, that's actually it. because people can be physically harmed because you're lying about their... You can actually yell fire in a crowded theater, you know. You can, but you'll if suffer the con you'll suffer. But or if there's a yeah. fire, you, you're helping people. Right. But if you lie and cause a stampede... That's your problem. That's the issue. It's not the speech, it's the call to action. Gotcha. So you said, an, I, you know, you, you presume that I would have a problem with the government being in charge of mm -hmm. permissible speech. I'm asking you, since you're the one suggesting that some speech should be allowed and some speech shouldn't, do you think there's a problem with the government being char in charge of determining permissible speech? I guess it's just tricky just because racism is such a touch touchy subject, and I'm sure, like, I'm going to get just, like, kind of yelled at just because, like, what I've been saying. No, no. Um, but I guess... It's not really a touchy subject. Everyone, almost everyone in this country agrees, except for a few extremists. And they're, you're talking about single-digit numbers, right? You could probably count them on, on, on both hands, feet, and maybe yeah, if you were inbred, true. you know, your flippers. Uh, how many people are actually racist in this country mm -hmm. who believe that white people are superior to black people? It's not like you're going to get crap for that. Right. Right? I guess, the, I guess my thing is, like, maybe now that I, like, think about it, I think that, yes, it's like, can you say racist things? I suppose yes. But my thing is, should you, like, should you as a person say that? No, sure. I just don't think it's a good idea for you because right. we should just respect everyone. Well, not me. I didn't say anything racist. Of course, of course. Or, I'm saying, like, you, like, as a per, like, just a general sure. person. It's I, like, can you do this? Yes. yes. Should you do that? Probably not. I agree. It's not a good thing. Okay. I think the more important question is, uh, could you be a country uh, like, uh, yeah, or could you be a place like Canada, my home country of Canada, right. or a place like the UK and Germany, and legislate speech that is offensive and put people in jail for it? 
Well, you, you can't right now in the United States. Mm -hmm. Some people would like us to be able to. Um, should you? No. Okay. So that's a more important question. Will we agree on that? I think we do, yes. Oh, great. All right. Thank All right. you so much, man. Yeah, I appreciate thank you. you. I appreciate I, I've it. watched your show before. I just wanted to be able to oh, see thank what it was like. Thank you, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. Nice I hope it was productive. I think it was, too. Hi. Steven, nice to meet you. I can't really shake your hand because no, I got... No, you're good. Nice I'm to meet you. actually on the speech and debate team here, so... Like, oh, cool. I do this for fun. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Um, I just wanted so, to, like... So, uh, yeah, let me kind of... Yeah. Sorry, do you mind stepping in just because we don't want to oh, no, cause a distraction? Just we're like right here, right and like, yeah, yeah. If that works, okay. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't bite. I'm not aggressive. No, this is what you might have read in the college paper. Uh, what I'm talking about hate speech. I'm not talking about people speaking hatefully. People can say hateful things. Obviously, I'm talking about any kind of speech that's differentiated or should be differentiated legally based on its level of uh, offense caused or quote unquote oppression. So if there's not a, a real law thing. saying that it can't happen, then that's hate speech. Or? Yeah, I'm saying in the United States, the definition that's used, for example, uh, on campus quite a bit, or what was okay. lobbed against yeah. me, for example, for the rape culture isn't real. Uh, I was accused of hate speech. That's not real. It's not a thing. Okay. If you disagree, you're more than welcome to change my mind. I'm just like concerned about your definition because like the Merriam-Webster definition of hate speech is like speech that is hateful based on someone's like race, gender, or sexuality. Mm -hmm. So you're saying it like differentiates from like the normative definition? I'm talking about a legal definition here in the United States. So, okay, so just the legal definition. So what someone can go to jail or be fined for. Yes, I believe, okay. I, I believe that any kind of speech that would be uh, uh, differentiated out from under the umbrella of freedom of speech okay. doesn't exist. I don't think there's speech offensive enough okay. uh, or egregious enough to warrant any kind of legislation. So unequivocally, like, all speech is protected? Yes. Speech. Freedom of speech. Freedom yes. of, okay. Uh, a few questions. Sure, go ahead. Oops, let me let that loud truck pass. Oh. oh, thank you. I appreciate you being so considerate. Oh, anytime. Um, I 100% um, agree with you that free speech should be protected. I'm actually from Russia, so like this is like a very personalized issue for me. I can imagine, um, yeah. Yeah, it's terrible over there. Um, I'm from questions. Canada. It's terrible over there too. Well, that's, <laughs> I think I disagree with you there. No. Oh. Um, I just wonder, what about like fear mongering, like speech that is a call to action for violence to occur, like the sure. speech or the rhetoric that was perpetuated in like the case of the Pulse nightclub shooting, like hateful speech that like mongers fear. Yeah. So, what speech are you talking about that led to the Pulse nightclub shooting? Perhaps religious rhetoric that insinuated that is... Okay. Okay. Perhaps from whom? A specific religion. Okay. It was an Islamic terrorist who like had like a perpetuation of like fear-mongering and free speech. That You're talking about the Pulse nightclub blood. shooter himself? Well, certainly, but like there are him religious being institutions as well that use their free speech in order to like perpetuate hateful rhetoric. Sure. So let's define hateful rhetoric. Okay. Uh, rhetoric that is hate... I, that like it's difficult to define. Hateful rhetoric is something that incites like... Well, just, anger within, I don't know. Okay. Like, so how would that be defined legally? I think that anything that discriminates against someone based on their sex, ability, or disability, sexual orientation, or gender can be considered hate speech. Okay. Yeah. And, and it's something that should be an actionable offense, should be uh, limited or controlled or legislated by the government? You're a smart guy. You've heard of like Sapir Whorf, right? Like language constructs reality. I feel like even if speech is protected unequivocally, oftentimes that speech is misconstrued and that rhetoric becomes violence. That's okay. like what happened with Hitler. It was fear mongering. Like, that, but it wasn't really misconstrued. I don't think that people uh, perhaps knew. That I think he was Hitler was kill. pretty clear about what he wanted to do. I don't think he told the masses like I'm going to go kill six million Jewish people. Like I don't think that was like his initial message. It wasn't his initial message. Yeah. You know, he he eased into it. Certainly. But I think to compare Hitler's, for example, his rhetoric and being a part of you know the National mm -hmm. Socialist Party of Germany, comparing that to someone who might say something that someone could misconstrue as hateful and mm -hmm. use as inspiration to commit an act of violence is, is not at all the same. So I guess you know you said you had some questions for me. What would be an example of speech that you think should be controlled or legislated by the government? If someone tweets out you should go kill this person because they're gay I certainly believe that they should oh, of be of course held. yeah that, isn't that free speech no okay no we already have laws in the books for that and that's because it's an active call to violence it's the okay. action so for example you could say I hate Steven Crowder that's fine certainly. you yeah. could say yeah you could say I hope Steven Crowder gets uh, I don't know gets stabbed with a pitchfork okay, okay that's probably fine or I hope he gets run over by a car you can't say go run over Steven Crowder with a car or I'll pay $500 to someone who runs over Steven Crowder with a car. Okay. It's the call to action. There are already laws in the books. So you're That's drawing the speech. line at the call to action. Okay. Well, I'll the law draws a, lo draws a line at an active call to action. Yeah. So, okay, in 2016, during the election um, at TCU, people went around on bulletin boards writing the three-fifths compromise needs to come back. Would that be considered hate the, the speech? What? what was it? The three-fifths compromise needs to come back. Okay. Would that be considered hate speech or 
like, would you protect that? Would I, would I protect that? Well, I don't know what your rule is on, on shocking or painting or whatever it is, but uh, uh, do I think that those students should go to jail? Do I think that they should be fined by the government? No. Held to, okay, so you think that, like... I also think, wasn't there, was it at TCU that, that where people talked about the eight, eight words? I'm talking about the neo Nazi. You're talking about you know the uh, 8888. It's probably before my time. Okay, that's probably yeah. that. Or poop, poop swastika, which was proven to be a hoax. Um, so uh, no, yeah, I think I think people should be able to say things that are wildly offensive, whether it's racist, whether it's you know quote unquote homophobic. I, I think I have no problem with it. I, it doesn't mean I agree with the point of view. Okay. I think it should be freedom of speech for all. I believe in the First Amendment. Or uh, then you have to determine for me what the line is. But what about like the repercussions of that speech? Like, I, I Where, where's like, the line? I guess because you know I notice that you have a lot of questions. When I ask you questions, you answer yeah. with a question. So wh what where's line the line? Where's about? the line for freedom of speech? Right. What, what do you disagree with me on? What do you want to change my mind on? I think that certain expressions of free speech mm -hmm. lead to violent actions occurring. Like, okay. I think that it's very hard to say that there's no correlation there. No, I didn't say there's no correlation. Okay. But then how do we exist in a society when we're allowing people to like directly influence or like indirectly violent actions occur? Well, there's a very big difference, isn't there? Uh, please explain. We just said, you just said directly or indirectly. Directly or indirectly. Yeah. Like, so okay, directly. So, the so of violence is like so illegal. So if you're calling someone to violence yes. and you're going to go to jail regardless, you're going to get a fine, whatever. But what if like your speech, the rhetoric that you're putting out to the public, is the reason that eventually a hate crime occurs? Like, shouldn't you be held to some kind of penalty for that? So could you give me an example of what kind of speech? Because again, I gave you an example of direct. So mm -hmm. I think this is important because as you said you're in the debate team. Yes. Right. So direct and indirect are important. Yes. Right. They're they're antonyms. Yeah. Right? So direct, like I said, would be kill Steven Crowder with your car. Okay. okay. What would be an example of indirect hate speech that would lead someone to commit violence that you believe needs to be controlled uh, or legislated? If someone is constantly tweeting out like racial slurs, like. Well, I was trying to go with the Steven Crowder example, but let's say, okay, let's say I say, let's say, let's say I'll say this. Uh, uh, someone says black people are inferior to white people, mm -hmm. or someone says uh, black people are inferior to Asians or Russians, whatever. Okay. Just take your pick. Okay. And then someone later on. <laughs> that's the that's the sound of that's the sound of losing an argument. Um, so someone says something racist. Okay. Down the line, someone says, "I was inspired by this racist statement to commit an act of violence." Okay. Okay. What's your view on that? Is that, is that what we're talking about as indirect? I think that, that correlation is what's dangerous. I think because language constructs reality, because what people are putting out there is oftentimes the reason why certain actions occur. I think that there's sure. not necessarily limitations or censorship. I don't believe in that at all. But there has to like be a line drawn at some point. Well, if there's, if you're not. Did you just say that you don't support any kind of legislation or censorship, but there does need to be a line drawn? I don't support censorship. I certainly don't think that like the government should be interfering in what's put out in the media, but I think that's different than what someone is like tweeting out. If someone's tweeting out this violent, like, I'm trying to like draw a distinction, but I don't think you're getting the, that's fine. No, I think I am getting it. Okay, you. okay. You just said you don't support any kind of legislation or censorship, but there does need to be a line drawn. So what do you mean by line? Uh, like decency, humanity. I think that, oh, like, I agree. yeah. I agree. So I don't understand what you're arguing then. I'm talking about hate speech as, uh, as legislation, as it as exists in my home country of Canada. As you said, but Russia. What are the laws in Canada? I don't, I'm not familiar so with them. So we just talked about this with, uh, I believe Nick was his name. In okay. Canada, you can be fined for hate speech. Uh, I have a friend who's a comedian who was put before Human Rights Tribunal for telling a joke. Mm -hmm. In the UK, it's over 3,000 people per year alone. Mm -hmm. uh, just recently, a girl was uh, charged with a hate crime for posting Snoop Dogg lyrics on her Facebook page because it included okay. the N-word. Uh, I'm sure you're familiar uh, with Count Dankula, the dog that yeah. did the Nazi mm -hmm. salute, right? Okay. So in other countries, you can be charged, convicted, uh, for cr criminal behavior mm -hmm. based on speech. Okay. We have the First Amendment, so we don't have that here. Mm -hmm. The term hate speech in those countries is used to create that line, okay. which, by the way, that authority has been granted to their government. Mm -hmm. um, in the United States, uh, thankfully, we don't. hate speech doesn't mean anything. It's not a legal terminology. Lots okay. of people would like to change that. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. But if it seems it seems like we agree, if you don't believe that the government should have any role in legislating speech at all, and you're you're good with it, then I think we agree. No, okay. So if someone were to draw a swastika in our commons, is their speech protected? Well, hold on a second here. Speech is different from freedom of expression, and a lot uh, of people no, say freedom. No, no, of no, no. I think that they're very like intimately correlated. No, like, people express their speech through different like no. aspects. Yeah. No. For sure. No, legally they're not the same thing. So that being said, uh, 
the campus, of course, can do what they want, okay. especially if it's a private campus. Yeah. They can do what they want, just like a private business can do what they mm -hmm. want. I saw you brought up Twitter earlier. But freedom of expression is actually not in the Constitution anywhere. Freedom okay. of speech is. And the reason for that is, as you said, people express themselves in different ways. Mm -hmm. Some people can express themselves in ways that are very destructive, mm -hmm. physically, as a matter of fact. As a matter of fact, even if you look at artists, they actually mm -hmm. often do things that are physically damaging, if not to their own bodies, to other people. Speech by itself, speech is not destructive to that degree. That's why freedom of speech is protected uh, in the First Amendment under the Constitution, and uh, freedom of expression isn't. So I'd, okay. I'd like to keep the conversation to speech, because that's what we're talking so about. So speech, the things that people like utter, the only people, utterances, that people and say. perhaps like on the internet, I don't know if you think people are exercising their freedom of speech on like Twitter. If we're talking about the written word, you, yeah. You, written we can word and, written okay, word. utterances. Yeah, that's written, totally written word is speaking, yeah. I just... Which is important, because that's actually an important delineation because of libel versus slander. But uh, um, yeah. yeah, so sounds like you agree that speech shouldn't have any limitations, the government shouldn't put limitations on speech. I think there's several points that we agree on, but where we disagree on is that I believe that oftentimes hate speech can be the catalyst towards violent crimes and violent actions and okay. like acts of hatred. I, I don't think we're agreeing on that point. Okay, so how do you, how do you fix it then? perhaps begin a culture where hate speech like isn't normalized. I feel like hateful rhetoric has become normalized recently, like especially like in the status quo, people believe that like they can put anything out there or say anything without any like sort of punishment. Not punishment. I don't think people Let's should see there well yeah. you well you keep you're kinda of contradicting yourself there. Punishment would mean punishment by, legal. Yeah. I mean okay. you're 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 in a debate, right? What is it what does punishment mean? Uh, it depends like the body of like who is putting okay. the punishment. But the among, person who would yeah. be administering punishment would have to be in a position of authority. Uh, perhaps it could be like some, Twitter bots who are regulating Twitter. Or, well, that's more we're talking about colloquialism, colloquialism okay. but we're talking about actual punishment, right? Okay. You said without punishment. Punishment mm -hmm. would have to come from some authority figure, okay. right? Someone has the authority to punish somebody else. Okay. So that would be I think that you're government. parametricizing hate speech to something that, it, like, I don't buy your definition that it's only, like, what can be legislated as it is in Canada. Like, hateful rhetoric exists. People, yeah, like, yes, I said that right at the outset. People yeah, say hateful things. But you said that hate but they speech should be is only to. what should be like what in the status quo is like legislated or like laws are placed yes. upon. As far as what as far as what we're talking about today, hate speech as okay. it's lobbed around this campus. For example, let me give you kind of a jumping off point. The reason we're back here, I was accused of hate speech. Okay. What? For uh, the last time I was here on this campus okay. where the son said rape culture is a myth. Well, Changed my mind. I will actually say that I like entirely disagreed with that. I think you have a right to be here. You have a right to like engage in peaceful discourse with students. And I think well, it's kind you. of ridiculous when they start screaming and crying and can't control their emotions. Well, but I, anyway. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, but a lot of people said that was hate speech. Okay. So it, again, it serves to, to illuminate that many different people have different lines of what determines hate speech. Okay. That's why it has to come down to some kind of a legally uh, identifiable definition. Okay. In the United States, it doesn't exist. Okay. I agree with that. I'm pro hate speech not existing as a legal term. I'm pro First Amendment. I am never going to disagree with anyone who says that some people speak hatefully. Now, you keep going back to sometimes people speak hatefully or they use hateful rhetoric and someone misconstrues that to commit an act of violence. Mm -hmm. I of course still think that's protected. So you think that like religious leaders, like let's say like Ayatollah Khomeini who constantly goes like death to America and constantly perpetuates rhetoric that like Americans are like Western invaders who are horrible and deserve to die. Like, is his speech protected if Iran didn't well, have such terrible laws? Well, like, I, I think, it, yeah, I was going to say, I yeah. think it would be more fair to use an American example like Louis Farrakhan. Okay. Do you think that his speech is protected? His speech is protected. So when people, like religious zealots, go out and commit crimes, like, in the name of their religion, like, like the it, rhetoric like that incited that violence should continue to be protected? Yes. Now, unless it's a direct call to action. For example, Louis Farrakhan goes out and he's called Jew, Jews everything, I think, from the white devil to mongrels. He's been very anti-Semitic. Uh, he has the right to speak freely, absolutely. Now, if someone goes out and says, I killed somebody or I beat up a Jewish person uh, at a pro-Palestinian protest mm -hmm. because Farrakhan called them white devils, Farrakhan's speech is still protected. You think it's not? I just, I certainly believe that if a nation isn't doing anything to stop, like, the rhetoric that's inciting these horrible, like, shootings at synagogues, like, perhaps the person who, like, did the shooting heard, like, some inflammatory, or, sorry, fear-mongering <laughs> rhetoric, like, in advance. I just, like, don't understand how we continue to allow this type of, like, rhetoric and speech to exist in the status quo when we know that it directly correlates and directly creates and incites violence. Like, how do we, as a country, like... Well, first off, we don't that. we don't know that it directly correlates to violence. What we do know is that if you look at every single major free rights, uh, 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 human rights movement mm -hmm. in the United States, it started with speech. Okay. It started with speech from minority mm -hmm. groups. 
whether you're talking about uh, the civil rights movement in the 60s, uh, whether you're talking about, or even more recently, where people would use you know, gay marriage as an example, it starts with people in the minority who are afforded the same rights as those in the majority to speak freely. Okay. Uh, I believe that those minorities should be afforded the exact same liberties and freedom as anyone who's in a majority, regardless Certainly. of how many electoral votes they represent. Okay. So I think it's, uh, if it comes down to what you're talking about, you said we continue to allow. That's actually interesting language to me, because mm -hmm. uh, we don't allow anything. I mean, if we believe in the First Amendment, right, it's we don't grant basic human rights, birth rights. Okay. The term inalienable, I'm sure you're familiar yes. with, means these rights come from? God. God. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just say the universe. Let's see if you don't believe in God. Okay. Right? The point is, they're not granted by government. They're not granted by a Supreme mm -hmm. Court. They're not granted by voters. It's okay. a birthright. So when you say we allow mm -hmm. this hateful rhetoric, yeah. we're not allowing anything. People are speaking freely, and we can't interfere with that. That's what our basis of laws is, is, is uh, I mean, it's fundamental. Do you have any, like, if I were to bring to you a study, I don't have it, but I assume okay. studies on both sides that show everything exists. Um, if I were to bring you a study that said that there's a direct correlation between hateful speech mm -hmm. and violent crimes, yeah. you would say that nothing needs to be done and we can just allow that continue to exist in the status quo? I would ask you, what do you think needs to be done? Let's say you have that study and it says yeah. hateful speech. First off, we need to define hateful speech. Is something offensive? I think hateful speech, like the definitions that I've seen from like Merriam-Webster or Oxford, like directly state that this hateful speech is like targeted towards minority groups, like okay. normally, like that's what it's defined as. Okay, so it could be like conservatives on college campus. Yeah, I agree. Okay, um, does it include, for example, someone posting Snoop Dogg lyrics to their Facebook? That's where I think that there's a problem. I think that people misconstrue what hate speech is. Like when it's truly like ridiculous, like people like take it out of hand. People can't control their emotions. People are enraged by like stupidity, honestly. Right. Yeah. But you understand, for example, like Count Dankula, the yeah. dog we just talked yeah. about. Certainly you think those that are shouldn't have been put in like okay. prison for that. That's right. absurd. But these are the most moderate examples. Yeah. Right. The more severe example, like you mentioned being from Russia, would be Stalin. Yeah. Would be Adolf Hitler. Yeah. So the best examples we have have still resulted in unintended consequences and gross violations of human rights. Mm -hmm in their own freedom of speech. There is no good example. Okay. So do you think it would be a slippery slope if the United States implemented laws for hate speech? I think it's the only place left that actually, uh, uh, well, first off, it's a place that created freedom of speech as yes. we know it, and it's the only place that exists. Okay. I think that's a good thing, and I don't think that should change. Okay. And I don't think that that should change regardless of whether there's a study or not that would say someone says something hateful uh, and there's an increase in violent crime. I'm, let's go with you on that and say that mm -hmm. that's true. I think that the good far outweighs the bad. I think there's a far greater risk in limiting people's individual freedoms and granting the authority as to what's permissible in the as it relates to speech to a centralized government. So do you think the good speech can outweigh that bad speech and like those violent crimes? Like I'm I'm trying to like understand like I think I, I think that's the best way to combat hateful speech, yeah, is, is good mm -hmm. speech. I just don't think it's the government's role to step in and say which speech is what kind of speech is permissible. And it sounds to me like you agree. I do think that, like, I'm drawing a distinction as to, like, I truly believe that there's a correlation between the two, and if we're not doing anything, even as a people or as a government, legislating, like, some Okay, sort okay, of so there we go. This is, what it, some, yeah. so this is kind of the debate team, right? Yeah. We're going around, 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 around. Now it comes down to the truth, right? You said, as a people, we need to be doing some kind of legis legislating. What legislating? And what speech is worthy of legislating? I don't think we have a good country to take an example off of. I don't think anyone's done it properly. I think that they've taken it either too far, like the Count Dankula example that you continue to bring up. Okay. I don't. Continue. I brought up several examples. Yeah, do you want me to, you you want did, me to cycle through them again? No, we're good. Okay, good. Because debate, you're uh, misrepresenting me there, but go ahead, continue. Uh, my bad if I'm doing that. I just, I don't believe that we can exist in a country that respects democracy and equality if we're allowing people to continue putting forth hateful rhetoric that incites violence. Okay, so, again, I ask you, what legislation? You've, you've already said you are okay with, you think it would be a superior choice mm -hmm. to give the authority over to the government to legislate speech. Mm -hmm. How so? Well, certainly we don't have like a really great definition of hate speech thus far. Like any hateful rhetoric is totally okay, biased. Okay, so you define it's it because I'm not the one advocating legislation, right? You are. So you define it. We should legislate blank kind of speech that we're not right now. I think speech that has the ability to incite violence. But again, how do you weigh that? I think that it's a tricky balancing act that has to be How do you weigh guessed. that? I am not a politician, nor am I part of the legislature in the United States, so I wouldn't be able to come up with like. But you're willing to give that power over to the legislature if they properly implement laws. Okay. You know what I mean? How would they properly implement? No one here. I certainly don't think this is North Korea. I don't think people should be imprisoned for like exercising their free speech. But I do think that we need to draw a line in order to stop these like incendiary forms of speech from perpetuating throughout the masses. I guess I'm still. What What is that line? What is that line? Yeah. What is that line? 
that's very difficult to say and now I understand why you say that hate speech isn't real there's no real definition of hate speech that exists in the status quo that can be applicable to like legislate like, and, and as you acknowledge everywhere else that it has been applicable has been terrible from the extreme examples to the most moderate examples mm -hmm. you just said no country that has basically incorporated what you're proposing as mm -hmm. sort of vague legislation right now yeah. no country has done it well so you said the United Kingdom had 3,000 about 3,000 per year Okay, do you have a statistic showing how many of those are like righteously like deserved or is it? Well, I don't think that any of them are righteously deserved okay, outside of actual fair. threats of physical violence. Okay. In other words, so again, that's, that's what's most important. I don't think any, any example in Canada of a comedian being fined or mm -hmm. put before human rights tribunal is okay. Um, but again, I'm not the one proposing legislation. I'm, yeah. I'm good with the First Amendment. You're the one who is proposing a change, but you can't draw the line as to what should be permissible and what isn't permissible. But you're willing to give that huge swath of control over to the government. And I'm, I'm sure that we can both agree that's a very dangerous idea. So what if we had a group of, like, let's say we had an epistocracy, like, who was going to take charge of hate speech, like, the best of the best, the most intellectual people who were, like, define hate speech as something that's, like, parametricized to be accurate and, okay. like, functional. Would you be okay with that? Who picks the group? I don't know. We take a test. Everyone takes a test, and the smartest, the smartest two percent of the nation is like taken, and they get to decide what is hate speech and what okay. law should be put forth. So, do we? This is based on the premise that the smartest two percent of the population would be the most effective at preserving laws and the liberty of uh, perhaps individuals. not preserving laws, but like or creating, creating laws? laws. Creating laws. I don't agree. Okay. I don't, I don't agree that only do you, that only the top 2% of intellectuals should be in control of birthrights, of people's right to freedom of speech. Okay. So I want to make sure that I understand correctly. We disagree, and I appreciate yeah. being respectful. Uh, we disagree on the idea that there should be some legislation mm -hmm. uh, on speech. You're not exactly clear as to what that line is. Okay. Uh, but you're willing to give that you're willing to give that roll over to not necessarily the government, but an appointed board of the top that's two percent a, of Americans. That's certainly a hypothetical, but I do think okay. that we should take people who are like highly intellectual and know on the subject, like communication scholars, sociologists, like people who directly study humanity and communication and the power that it has. Yeah. Well, we say the Founding Fathers were intelligent. I do think the Founding Fathers are intelligent. I moved to this country for a reason, but I do also think that they were part of the elite and perhaps didn't know what it's like to be part of a like, minority group. Mm. What, but can you name me a tool, I guess, that has been used more by a minority group to improve their lives and, and the freedom of speech? Freedom of speech has certainly helped them, but it's also like harmed them when the like majority uses it against them. Okay. Yeah. So, again, but you do understand if you're offering that power over to a government, right? And mm -hmm. You mentioned democracy. We're a constitutional republic, but it would be even worse if we were a democracy, right? Yeah. Now you have mob rule. Mm -hmm. You have people who are in charge of determining speech laws. You see that's even more difficult? I, then I you have, for example, now. Nazi Germany. Yeah, at the, not necessarily, a, wouldn't say majority, I don't want to misuse the term, but a plurality mm -hmm. right at that point. Uh, for example, in Canada, we don't have a two-party system, so you can have someone elected who's 38% of the vote. A plurality of the people who uh, believe in, in one particular set of, they believe one worldview, yeah. and they can implement that on minorities, right? Mm -hmm. As you saw in Russia, as yeah. you see in the, the Castro regime. Mm -hmm. That's dangerous. So allowing anyone to determine what basic fundamental human rights are uh, permissible or allowed to use your language it's just it's antithetical to the, the founding fathers view of government it's the whole reason for freedom of speech is so that the majority as mob rule can't infringe on the rights of the minority and i think the same freedom of speech should be afforded to everybody whether the majority or minority because it's ever changing and we both can agree on that yeah absolutely yeah that's my point of view and it just it, it hasn't changed i think i agree with you on most things except for <laughs> <laughs> Great representation of our campus. Um, I do appreciate the respectful discourse. I think we agree on like a lot, but also disagree on like very little. I don't think I'm going to change your mind, but I do think that this was like good discourse. Before I move on, two seconds to plug Mug Club. What is Mug Club? Well, it's what allows us to continue producing these videos due to demonetization and shadow banning. Not only do you get this wonderful hand-painted, hand-etched mug and get to support the kind of content that you're watching right now, but you get to watch the one-hour daily show as well as all of the content uh, available at CRTV. Ladderwoodsclutter.com slash mug club. On with the show. Now, it's important to note that the point of Change My Mind is not to debate, rather to rationalize one's position. And sometimes, common ground just is nowhere to be found. So you would be okay with restricting freedom of speech. You would be okay with restricting or increasing, creating actually, speech laws if that were voted on by the masses. If the masses want it, absolutely. More on that in a second, but sometimes you find kinships in the most surprising of places. You worked on the Hillary Clinton campaign. Could you, would you, okay, would you mind coming up and talking about this? I appreciate it.
All right, they, what was your, my hands are icicles, so I'll just pop, what was your name? Uh, my name is Felicia. Felicia, all right, so you know at the end of this interview, it's gonna be an easy lip, just buy Felicia. Sorry, it's, it was just my water, I did not spit, I swear to you, I moved it, that's what happened. Now you're just gonna spill water. No, 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 I just wanted to recreate, spill. I wanted to recreate it so you didn't spill. think I would spit. I'm just kidding. Oh no, this is gonna end badly. <laughs> We're gonna get to that bye Felicia sooner than I thought. Um, oh. I'm joking. No, it doesn't even bother me anymore. I bet you people do that all the time. Because it's like, as soon as you show somebody that something bothers you, then they're just gonna troll you. Bye Felicia. Which is why you keep coming here, right? No, it's not to troll. We've had really productive conversations. <laughs> it's so okay. Just it's trolling is cool. We no, we're not. We're not here to troll. So you just mentioned that your boyfriend was a fan. Big um, fan. Biggest Trump cruise. He loves Steve. King. He asked me to bring a Steve King sign. Really? You know the. For y'all who don't know, he's the congressman in Iowa's third or fourth. I can't remember. Oh, why would he ask you to bring that? Because he loves Steve King. All right. Anyways, okay. yes. But you said so you, worked on, you worked on the I Hillary worked on Hillary Clinton's and campaign as a field organizer in. Des Moines, Iowa. And you said that you've never been more disappointed. I've never been more disappointed and embarrassed by the people who claim to share my same values. How so? At some point when you disagree with somebody or you don't like what they're saying, that doesn't mean that you just have to start attacking them. You have to figure out a way to intellectually come up with your argument. Stop putting shame all over what people work tirelessly for to make life better. Yeah. At the end, I mean, that's like from the left and the right, everyone. So you're, and I guess that would relate kind of to today's topic where you see a lot of people on the left, or did you see a lot of people at the campaign going, I can't believe that this person said that should be hate speech. It, you know, <laughs> I can't remember what sort of non-disclosures I signed at the beginning of the campaign. All right, well, you were disappointed. So, but I was just, as far as the specifics, as far as our weekly communication calls, where all we were told to do was to attack Donald Trump weekly on communication calls mm -hmm. as to pivot away from whatever controversy Hillary found herself in. Yeah. So from there, you can just see it seeping down um, into teenagers alike it's just it's embarrassing i'm ashamed well don't be ashamed you, have, you don't have anything I to be ashamed of i appreciate you being honest hate the fact that i want to be able to call myself a progressive or a liberal or a democrat but all that happens is people will just assume that i'm going to come over here and scream or spit or rip or cry because i don't like what somebody says right hate speech is just speech it's mean yes Right. There are social norms that we should try to abide by. Yeah, decency. Just don't go around calling people bad words, right? Right. Doesn't mean that you should get thrown in jail for it. It doesn't mean the government should legislate it. There's assault, which is a whole nother, right. you know. Part right, of a, call, the law. a call to action. Exactly. So it's interesting that you say that you're, you know, you're progressive, kind of more liberal. I don't want to. So you would like to be able to, but I would because love you're to be so able concerned to sit with. I here and say, I'm a liberal, I'm a Democrat, I'm this, I'm that, but the fact that that label is now associated with something so radical. At some point, you can try to be so inclusive, so this or so that, but you just exclude people. I was an active member and donor of our county Democratic Party, and at some point, I didn't agree with Nancy Pelosi. Didn't want to go see her. I think she's a terrible choice for Speaker of the House. Yeah. And I was told, just to go to a Republican meeting. Really? Yes. So at this point, that's crazy to me. I would have thought that most Democrats don't really like Nancy Pelosi. She's just a necessary evil. You know. Well, it's, but you're not supposed to go and acknowledge the fact that there's wrong, are you? You're talking about the woman who was denied communion, the previous pope. So even the pre I think it was the previous pope was like, who yeah, wouldn't? Yeah, yeah. Just terrible. I <laughs> So you got flack for that, and they just said, "Well, you might as well be a Republican." Does that does that sort of tell you that maybe maybe the current Democratic Party, like they're more narrow-minded uh, than I would say? I don't want to say Republican, I just don't like but to the generalize right it that hard. I really am just I'm really against the generalizations. I really hate the concepts. Like I said, like why I don't want to be generalized in this group of people that I. But they kicked you out. They kicked me out. Yeah, I know. But my boyfriend Connor, who you said hi to, 
says I'm in an identity identity crisis. I think so a little it's bit. Hard. Let me ask you this, because so. you, you, you seem like you're a supporter of the First Amendment of freedom of speech. I am it. a supporter of all five articles of the Constitution. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay, so then you, right away you're, that, that disqualifies you from being a modern Democrat. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me ask you this. Who, who would you feel on a national platform in the Democratic Party represents your values as they relate to um, things like freedom of speech, things like individual liberty? And it seems like you're against identity politics, I, obviously. It's hard for me to say, you know, this one person stands... Sorry, there's glare. Oh, there's glare here. I'm, I'm taller. I've got moose height, so I can stand here. Does that help you? No. Okay, you want me to move? Nice try. Okay. Um, I can't name one person on the Democratic Party that I would want to, you know, stand there and lead us to victory in 2020. No. Name one person. I think that if Amy Klobuchar, out of Minnesota, anybody, Senator okay. from Minnesota, um, would denounce yeah. Keith Ellison just as you know, everybody tries. Yeah, that was an odd, uh, kind of an odd spell with the Me Too and then Keith Ellison. Okay, it's hard to justify that in an <laughs> argument. But I would say currently she's kind of my favorite okay. um, centrist, as centrist as you can get Democrat. Okay. I think that if she could just uh, denounce Keith Ellison. I'm waiting, kind of worried maybe she didn't do it because she was worried about her reelection. Okay. So now that she's been reelected, hopefully she can come out and... Okay. Denounce Keith Ellison. All right. Go well, ahead. thank you. Well, I appreciate you taking. What was your name again? Felicia. Fel oh, that's right. I was. I oh, forgot. Yeah. I forgot to do the. I'm not going to say the by Felicia thing. I, I appreciate you standing here and discussing Felicia. Now, in contrast to that, some folks at these events just can't be reasoned with, want to take up all of the time at the podium, and just will not let you go, even after the conversation has ended multiple times. I appreciate that you go on for a while, but let me kind of laser in on this question. So, you would be okay with restricting? freedom of speech. You would be okay with restricting or increasing, creating actually, speech laws if that were voted on by the masses. If the masses want it, absolutely. Really? If the masses, and again, I'm wanting legitimate masses, what the bulk of the people in the country want. Yes, I absolutely okay. would. And I'm going to use, actually, I'm actually going to use conservative logic for a second. Yeah. And conservatives frequently say, if you don't like it, leave. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying if you don't like it, leave. But I'm saying that the typical logic is if the people, if the multiple of people want something from both sides, typically that's what everyone says should happen. No. Can you give me an example? The First Amendment. Again, it doesn't we, matter. People, you don't get to vote on it. Humans still chose that. Humans still wrote the First Amendment and said, yeah, yeah that's this the basis is a law of this that country. matters. Yeah. And it's the only country that has the First Amendment. And, and it's, it's and still it's, a human that said that. It's, well, excuse me, humans that said that. And humans were the ones who sure. said, this law is inalienable. As you said, this law is, a, th this right is given to us no matter what. Mm -hmm. Humans still said that. And humans still yeah. absolutely have the right to change so it. I think if you're just saying that all laws should just be determined by, ma by mob rule, particularly freedom of speech, I think that's really a, a scary thought. And I, I, just, dis I disagree with you. I will qualify what guess I what? said. Donald Trump, Mike Pence, and a Senate majority right now can determine that what, what you say is hate speech. I will qualify I don't agree for a with second. That. I will qualify that not just straight up mob rule, but mob rule and actual evidence-based science, critical thinking, things like that. Yeah, no, I disagree. Okay. I disagree. I don't think that people should be able to vote and you're welcome on, to disagree. on the freedom of you have speech. The first, you have the First Amendment right, right to disagree at the moment. At the moment. Absolutely. But Absolutely. you'd be okay with someone taking it away? As long as it's taking away things that hurt people, as long as it's taking away things that we as a science know does lead to lower well-being, does eventually incite hostility and eventual hate crime, which I know hate crime, hate speech, not the same thing, but does eventually lead to that, that does become a problem. And that's where the discussion needs to happen is what speech is protected, what speech is not protected, when it does lead to problems that does affect the prosperity of people and the prosperity of our country. Yeah, I think it's very, I think you've just laid out a very subjective definition and left it in the hands of not only mob rule, but then eventually bureaucrats to determine a fundamental human right. I just don't agree with you. Uh, but I appreciate taking the time. Yeah, thank you for chatting with me. Thank you, man. Again, unfortunately, you've not I changed hope... my mind. I've not changed your mind. Well, my goal wasn't to change your mind. Your goal was to change mine. I, 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 a mo mob rule, uh, I, I just... Again, I, I say very... rule of the masses and yeah. critical thinking you don't and get scholarly to vote. You pursuit. don't get to vote on a fundamental human right. Yeah, we chose the rights. We no. can choose to get rid of them. There you go. Well, I guess that's that's a very different worldview. And that's I'm, I'm not okay with anyone removing your rights 
at all. I'm not okay with anyone stepping in and saying, you don't have the right to believe what you believe and, you or know, speak freely. But you're okay with someone walking in and telling someone what they can and can't say. That's terrifying. What I'm, what I'm not... And as a sociology major, it is it is striking to me... I'm not that a you psychology major. I'm not a sociology. sociology. I thought you said sociology. Psychology. 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 Okay. So let's go with psychology. As a psychology major, do you not see the grave risk, the much more grave risk in centralizing the power to a government or allowing it to be tossed to a vote every single time? Because that changes that cultural fabric. A fundamental right like freedom of speech as opposed to allowing it, uh, allowing people to speak freely? Do you not see the, historically you, the mass violence? Can you go back violence? to your first question before yeah. you mention the psychology, sociology? Because I'd like to talk about that before I do mention that real quick. Well, I don't, okay. No, could you remind me of it so I can make sure I'm responding correctly? I, I just, the question before I mentioned yes. it? Yes. I don't remember what the question was. So my okay. question is this. I, I'm surprised, um, as someone you said, you're a PhD candidate. Yep. So you're obviously a very smart person. Uh, how you don't see the grave risk, the much more... Uh, I mean, historically, just the, the unbelievable risk of, of violence associated with centralizing the power and who determines speech and what's permissible. You know, it can backfire. It really can. It, it always has. Can. It's never not. But eventually, it's never it not. Can, I would like to see evidence for that. Can you point me to any single country that has restricted I'm sorry, speech but that has done better? I simply better? ask you for the source. Okay. Can you give me the source? Nazi on that? Germany, Soviet Russia, Castro, uh, Che Guevara regimes, current UK, Canada, Maoist China. Need I go on? Absolutely. You said every country. Every, can you provide you me an example of every, every? Can you country. provide me an example with one country? I'm sorry, but you said every. This is the every Otis single is, country that has limited freedom of speech has has it has resulted in a net loss. I'm sorry, for human but the freedom. emphasis is on you for that. You were the okay, one who made I just that claim. Okay. You said every. Okay, let me put it this one. way: every single country that's not the United States okay. is worse than the United then States in relation to free speech. Stop. Please give me an actual citation to back up your claim. I just Not, did. no, a citation, please. That is okay. a scholarly source that you are going to be able to rely on that has actually done the research for this. Okay, so you would say that a Nazi Germany, Soviet Russia, Maoist China, Che Guevara, Castro well, actually, regime, Canada, where people, hold on, I'm just, go, I, I can't, okay. listen, I can't go through every single country. Come on, let's not I'm do not the thing. I'm just asking you to give me a scholarly source that says that. Okay, uh, I don't have a scholarly source with me right now saying that Nazi Germany is worse off with speech laws in the United and States. And so what I said You're just going to have to take my word for it. And exactly what I said was there are plenty of examples where it doesn't work. You're absolutely right. I don't disagree can with that at all. Can you point me to any example Eventually, where it has? we can possibly get to the point where it can work. And we need to keep trying. That doesn't mean one. because it hasn't worked, one. we don't give up. One. Well, you asked me for sources. One country that has better net results for human freedom and human rights by restricting speech. What's your source? One. You know, I'm honestly going to say we're not there yet. Okay. I, Thank you very much. Though. I appreciate it, brother. It can work, Thank so you so much. Hopefully, once we find that one example, that'll be great. Oh, well, they can't all be gems. By the way, notice anything? Even though we returned to TCU, where they screeched and warned about the perils of this program, the students were by and large peaceful, civil, engaged, and most left surprisingly untraumatized. Even more, we couldn't walk through campus without students both left and right expressing their appreciation for our, for your efforts, really. Which begs the question, are students really too far gone beyond saving? Or is it just the loudest voices amplified by the far left administrators who've made us think that to be so? Hey there, YouTube here. If you like this video, watch another one of our videos or subscribe, hit the notification bell. Those don't really mean anything anymore today in YouTube, I would say. Hit a like with a thumbs up, but that might be gone, or comment below, but that most likely will be censored. So bookmark the page. Of course, if you're using Google Chrome, they'll find a way to f with your bookmark. So just join up at loudearthcrider.com slash mug club. That's loudearthcrider.com slash mug club. You get a hand etched mug and you get access to the full daily one hour show and you're not beholden to Susan Wojcicki slash Clint Howard.